Uh, you can pull so much tail <laughs> in the nursing home. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, uh. Well, I didn't realize Talisker was a morning whiskey. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> <laughs> you got the, the weird morning sun coming in. That's yeah, nice. when you have a day like we have ahead of us, you gotta start shooting whiskey videos at before 8 a.m. <laughs> Living the dream. Deep breath, everyone. <laughs> okay, so this is a gift. This is donation day. Oh, oh! Wait a minute. Oh, look at all the things, and it's practically entirely a scotch day. <laughs> we are living the dream. <laughs> There's very, already, the reason why we did Donation Day is so we could get donations yeah. that are like obscure, and we're not having like really hard to find things across the entire week. Right. I just look back here. Those are some big brands back there. Yeah, but they're obscure versions of things. Obscure versions well, some of, them. of things. Okay. Like so. this one, for example, Talisker, we all know yeah. and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, this is Michael and Sheila Gray. Michael and Sheila Gray? Yeah, you okay there? <laughs> Just making sure. Okay. We're very we're very strict about pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, we are. On this channel. Mikhail and Shyla Gar Gare. Yeah. Michael and Sheila Gray, you magnificent. <laughs> <Bastard>. <laughs> So a talus girl we all know and love, right? But they took a trip to Scotland. They brought back the Staff Select Distillery Exclusive Talisker. Okay. Can only buy it when you're there. Staff Select Distillery. So the staff actually chose this from yeah. the distillery, and you can only get it in the distillery. Yeah. Okay. On less than six thousand bottles, mm. or only six thousand bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, first matured in heavy oak refill. Yeah. Then an American oak hogshead. This is about to be a whiskey and toothpaste pairing. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> and then finally finished in European oak. Punchins. So they've moved it in three different barrels. Wait, punchins? Yeah, it's just a different size barrel. Talisker's trippy because it's the only um, distillery mm -hmm. on the Isle of Skye. I'm getting floral peaty. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This may be the most floral yeah. Talisker I've ever smelled. It's, it's floral is the front leading. The front wow. Leading. So I love that the early days of Talisker, they had to get permission to open their distillery from the local clan, McLeod. Mm -hmm. McLeod. And the payment was like, we'll do, let you do this for 23 pounds and uh, a 10 gallon barrel of the finest talisker. Just one? <laughs> Just one. You're really short sighted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like 10 barrels a year for as long as you're in They were super focused on like this next party they were about to have. Right? <laughs> That's still sweeter and more floral than any talisker I've I ever think tasted. The staff must have been. Beaten with peat for so long. It's they like, just hey, needed something to tame it. I a need little. a breather. <laughs> yeah. Let's get something a lot more floral. They uh, still, they still have the peat note in there. And it's sweet. It's really sweet. But it is dominated by fruity floral sweetness. So Talisker uh, eventually got taken over by the distillers company and then purchased by Diageo. And at one point they burned down the whole thing, and they were doing triple. At one point in their history, they were doing triple distillation mm. for a scotch. They burned down and they rebuilt themselves and had to rebuild all their stills. They use worm tube, which in, in theory, as opposed to more modern condensers, is supposed to provide a fuller flavor. That's really lovely though. Did it's you know really, that? It's really round. There's not any mm. kind of aggressive biting notes. Now this is from Robert the Brace. Robert the Brace, you magnificent bastard. Gersten. All right, now. Gersten. Go ahead. This is not the actual Gersten. The actual Gersten, because this is from a company called the Lost Distilleries. Lost Distilleries is trying to find distilleries that used to be open and have since closed. So late. And trying to recreate it, the yeah. flavor that used to exist. Yeah, you can Incredibly hardly see, light. see it. Yeah. Now, ooh, that's got some kind of funk to it. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm getting, you know what? This is a scotch? Yeah. Wow, I'm getting more oakiness. Yeah, and I would have thought more of an American single yeah, malt. Yeah, this is like an American oakiness. Yeah, and like the new oak kind of vibe. Yeah. So this is a blend. There were two companies in the history of Scotland, or two distilleries that were called Gersten. They were both opened, I think, around the same location, or at the same location. Mm -hmm. They were called Gersten 1 and Gersten 2, and then Gersten 2 later uh, became 
Ben Morvan. This is not uh, Space Side Sweet and Fruity. This is not Isla Smoky and Peaty. Now, the last time Gersten was distilled was 1914, so there's not a lot of memory of what it tasted like. There's some notes from people who wrote about it and things like that. This is them using blended whiskey to try to recreate a flavor profile from 1914. I actually like that. That's, uh, if you like oaky whiskeys. This like, is the number three series, batch number 1.11. If you like the wood. And bottle 693. So as big as the oak note is, uh, as dominant as it is, it doesn't take over and annihilate everything else. It does still give enough room for, uh, what is this sweetness here? There's a hint of black pepper at the end that I think is trying to be smoke, but it's not climbing above the sugar. Yeah, it's a sugar sweetness. But it's not a honey sweetness, it's not a fruity sweetness. No, it's actually like sugar added. Yeah, it's a, weird. It's a sugar And it's sweetness. not as bright as I would guess for a blended. No, milk. by the time you get to the end, it it was a balanced, rounded whiskey. Yeah. But uh, but the dominant note, you have the oakiness here, and then you have all these other notes stacked against it, but the oakiness reigns supreme. Mmm. Starting to get more of the spicy notes as I spread it around my palate. All right, what's the next one? Um, well, you're a man on a mission. Uh, Whistle Pig. Okay, now, we've reviewed Whistle Pig before. Yeah. But I'm gonna do this one again. Again? Because... Again. Again? Because... Hold on, who is it from? I was gonna open it straight first. Alright, there you go. Because this is a gift from Keith Armstrong, as in Keith's Barbecue. Oh! Who's been making barbecue for us for, like, three years. Keith Armstrong, you magnificent! Master. See, that was a good long follow through. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is the straight red whiskey, just the standard just the whistle standard pig. Just the standard whistle pig. Now, if you remember the famous whistle pig story, they make their whiskey by pouring it through the hole in the head of the pig that's uh, still alive on the farm. That's not it at all. Uh, it's close to it. Was it something like that? No. Whoa, do you see all the vapors? Look at this. Oh, so many vapors. Oh. <laughs> you know what? That's the vapors we saw whenever we opened up the, our cask for, yeah. for the first time. You saw these really smoky, it's the difference in pressure, I guess, the humidity is yeah. turning into like a mist for a little bit. A, I've tend got a, a tendril of mist. Yeah, it's just tendrils. <laughs> I, and when someone says tendrils of mist or smoke, I just picture Gandalf and pipe smoking, yeah. where it turned into shapes and mm -hmm. crawl around and did things. Um, thing about Whistle Pig is, uh, from their website to their bottle to their advertising, I think they just nail every ingredient. They, they don't do all the boring <laughs> They give you all the information you would need to ask about them, but they don't do it in a way that's trying to sound more important. And they give things flair without obscuring the details. Yeah. Like, for example, hey, we rescued this whiskey from Canada before it was able to be misused in a Canadian blend. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now you know everything you need to know about this whiskey, which was they sourced it from Canada. So, right? Rye. Alberta. It's one of the sweeter ryes on the nose. Yeah. Now, um... I am getting the... It's not... It's it's directionally like the, the, the anise, the black licorice note. It's headed there. Yeah. But it's not overwhelming. Yeah. Um, it's balanced to get some uh, some green apple on the nose. Together, Pete Lynch and Dave Pickerall are doing some really amazing stuff. They're, uh, not, they're now making their own whiskey on their Vermont farm. Hmm. Using their own, I think they're even using their own grains. They are uh, making their own barrels, Vermont barrels. I don't know if it's because we just came off these scotches. I am getting more oakiness on this rye than I usually mm -hmm. get from oaky, uh, from from rice. So you know they're doing all kinds of things now, uh, like we're talking about, which is they're taking Canadian whiskey and they're finishing it in their own barrels or in sherry barrels, and yep. they're mixing it back together with things. Yep. As a matter of fact, there were three different aging mixed together that created the old world finish. Whistle mm. pig. Mm. So they're doing some really cool stuff. That man. It's just a good. It's a classic rye. It's a classic rye with some character that takes the form of some oakiness that you don't often get from rye. I'm also getting a bit of green apple in there. It's very rounded. You do get the standard uh, rye black licorice anise note. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people find pickle. I'm not finding. I don't get the dill any, on this at all. Any dill on this at all. Ah. <sighs> I'm a giver. You know I'm not a mooch right now. Yeah. I'm just some dude. Just some dude in the vault. Some sexy dude. Sexy, sexy dude. Uh, this is the Platinum JW. Oh, uh, I don't know if I've ever had Platinum JW. Well, you're about to. 
So this Jeez. is from... Again, this is the kind of thing that should be its own review. It will be. Because it's really readily available. But this is... So uh, we're not going to go into deep review no. notes, but we'll... This is from Craig Clark. Broad Stroke so, Impressions. Craig Clark! You got it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in you. Don't make me laugh now. Okay. You magnificent bastard! Craig just showed up one day in the vault while I was in here with some other people. Craig's one of our whiskey sommeliers. Okay. And, and he was like, hey, I brought you some whiskey. And I'm like, oh, cool. He's like, yeah, it's JW18. I'm like, well, damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is the penultimate of the JW series. Oh, really? This, you know, after this, you got the, the fanciest uh, mean blue the label. Blue. So this and is just below it, you have the gold, which is like 15, if I'm not mistaken. It goes gold, platinum, blue. Yeah. And then you've got the 18. All right. That's pretty dark. Yeah. Now, according to them, oh yeah, there's it's a space side scotch with a hint of Isla. There's dark honey. According to them, dark honey on the nose. Is that, it's like a light molasses. What is this? No, I really wish they would give you more. I rescind molasses. It's not. It's not molasses. What's the proof? You know, they have maybe one of the greatest icons in whiskey marketing history. Yeah, that's no, a good icon. I mean that. Uh, the walking gentleman. That's just so classic. Forty percent. Because Johnny Walker's going to make them dollars. That's right, baby. <laughs> oh, this is just fresh is the, the note that... This is bright. I'm not getting any Isla. I don't I mean, maybe you could say it was Isla kissed. Maybe it, they had the bottle glance in the general direction of Isla. <laughs> like the way that... that I uh, fought in your general yeah, direction. That, yeah. <laughs> the, like, what's his name? Winston Churchill did with martinis and vermouth. Mm -hmm. I merely pour my martini while nodding in the general direction of the vermouth bottle. <laughs> Which really just means Winston Churchill drank straight gin, mar gin, so, just solid gin. <laughs> this is this is that. I so uh, in the world, this is one of the things that I'm coming to realize. In like any other industry, mm -hmm. what I'm about to say, of course, it applies to whiskey. But I'm now getting comfortable with the fact that the biggest brands are most often going to be tailored. Mm -hmm. For the biggest chunk of the market. Yeah, for the largest market. Right. Same thing with and music. And so the craft distillers and these guys that are just trying to make the best damn whiskey possible, mm -hmm. it's it's often heartbreaking whenever you see them pour their heart and soul into something, and you know, man, that's a damn good whiskey for that much of the market. Yeah. They'll, they'll appreciate and respect what's going on in this bottle. And it may be their hero. It may be the best one they've ever had in their life. Right. But they're still only going to hit about 4% of the market. And... It's like the the pop music of whiskey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And no, hey, that's absolutely it, true. It, this it, is like in sync. Yeah, and it's is, here's the thing, and, not, and that, I'm not saying that in a negative way. Yeah. I don't listen to in sync every day, it's not my vibe. But you know, if I'm alone and there's a song, I may do a little head bob. Yeah. And then I feel bad say, about it later. I'm a fan of Justin Timberlake. Yeah, I know he's talented. Yeah. It's good. But in terms of people that really are deep into this scene, yeah. it's just going to feel so, uh, so simple and easy uh, and effortless at 40%. Um, yeah, I and think that, that's the thing about Justin Timberlake is while I can admire him mm -hmm. and really enjoy listening to his music, he doesn't move me to tears like other artists do. So there's a right? reason. This is like, no, this is enjoyable and I get it. Yeah. I can respect it. It doesn't move me to my core. We'll give more like specific notes in the actual re review mm -hmm. review, but uh, there's a reason why the the ultimate achievement of whiskey that you know, not whiskey enthusiasts look for. Well, you is, can is, see is smooth. You, yeah, well, the word they is smooth. If yeah, they can that's... drink it and not get hurt, then that's an amazing whiskey. And the word smooth means nothing. Yeah, well, but it, I think direct. I think people uncomplicated. Uncomplicated, and it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't fight yeah. me. So I could see how someone would say like, if if their idea of a good whiskey is, it struggles less. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. It just goes down smooth, friendly and approachable. And I was about to say, uh, I've had orange juice that fights more than this. <laughs> no, no, no. I've had, just... I've had apple juice that fights more than this. Yeah, even the alcohol bird is almost non-existent. Yeah, but if you just want something effortless that just goes down, and it's a nice uh, you know, handful of flavors, then... But Johnny there is Walker. a whole category of the world that views lack of complexity as a marker of high quality. Right? 
Like something that just goes down effortless. effortless. Yeah. It's a, uh, for a whole category of people, that's a marker of high class and quality. Well, and to go back to my original thought, it, it is heartbreaking whenever the niche distillers feel like if they could just make something so tremendous and complex and pour their heart and soul into it, it's like, no, man, go for simple and smooth and get, have amazing marketing and you can mm -hmm. take over the world. Uh, okay, Jason Unsworth. Jason Isworth. Dos Moss. Jason Unsworth and uh, Unsworth. Unsworth. Okay. Jason Unsworth. You okay? Really, that was really fast, yeah, and that yeah, was just, it. He's just, he's just <laughs> a little stuttering. Jason Unsworth. You think that was a bastard? All right. So Jason, thank you. This is Bamore, which I think is one of the most underrated Isla whiskeys. Okay. Um, it's. Almost as approachable as Buna Haben in its lack of f you, Pete, but it has a little more aggression. Uh, the 12, I think, is just a classic, wonderful Isle expression. The Bamore small batch is almost, I mean, it's so friendly. This version, they're calling Bamore Darkest. I was about to say, the most noticeable characteristic of this so far is just that dark color. Okay, so and on the back, the very first words, on the eye, triacle. Dark amber. Yeah. Breathe in delicious dark chocolate. And it's 15 years old and they finished it in sherry casks. So it's an Isla whiskey finished in sherry casks. Now, well, I will tell you something kind of disappointing. No, Do you want me to tell you after you've had it to drink or before you've had it to drink? No, there may be one more uh, uh, niche of disappointment. Uh, does this have E150? Yes. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing! And they're chill filtering. Oh, the balls on these people! <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh! Name the whiskey oh, after the that's color. Hilarious. And then they color it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm not even mad. <laughs> Respect for the balls it took <laughs> to talk about how dark your whiskey is, and you put in food color. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is oh, hilarious. Man. But I will tell you, if you forget about all of that, that is hilarious. And judge it purely on taste and smell. Yeah, it's a really great whiskey. Okay. <laughs> it's the best whiskey I had from some really sketchy people, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Isla on the nose, getting that peat. Yeah, but there's some f sherry undertones in there for sure. <sighs> yeah. Wow, that goes down like nothing. It really does. It's on... What just happened? It's on par. 43. 43. That's on par with the JW. It really is. Just Is it just that we had a lot of water in our glasses? No, surely not. I drank all my water. I'm, I'm struggling to find nuance in there now. You had, you had enough whiskey in there to yeah. overcome just drops of water. Okay. Let me... <laughs> that was underwhelming. Yeah. I'm getting hints of food coloring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the nose is coming back out again here. Now that I'm able to spread it around the glass a little bit. This is 15 years old, though. Here's yeah, so. and I'm getting that kind of Oloroso almond note. Hmm. I'll have to look for that. So here, this is a 15-year-old whiskey, and admittedly, here's a, it's like, put yourself in the distiller's shoes. I'm not saying they should have put food coloring in it and called it the dark whatever the Oh, hell. hey. Put Sorry, your, it just jumped out there. Yeah. Spread it around your mouth. Okay. Put yourself in their shoes. They waited 15 years to open this whiskey, and then it looks like, like, you know, damn near white wine. <laughs> they're like, son of a bitch, because they know. They've already created their label. It says darkest. <laughs> it's like, damn it. <laughs> they, they know uh, a lot of people will judge a whiskey based on what color is it? Mm -hmm. And if it looks really, really, really light like a white wine, it's like, oh, there's probably not a lot of flavor there, which is not at all the case. Uh, yeah, I can see the impetus for this decision-making process. Oh, yeah. Can't fault it, because Well, honestly, I mean, you, you can fault you it, can, but, but you can understand you can where totally it get came it. from. And the, uh, as many of us who are, ser are take whiskey maybe a little too seriously, uh, don't give a shit about the color. They just want authenticity. Right. There's the uh, fat into the bell curve. Right that we were talking about, yeah. who have no idea, and will absolutely go, wow, that's super clear, that must not be that old. Okay, uh, do we have more? Mm, we want Unamas. Unamas, okay. Um, peach, and what were you getting on here? If you spread it around a little bit, you just get a little bit of uh, smoked almonds. 
Yeah, smoked, damn it, smoked almonds. Good on you. Yeah. So, um, last but not least, I'm kind of excited about this one, but I'm not sure if I should be. Okay. So, this is from Paul Dewar. Paul Dewar! For the black bottle. Yeah. You magnificent bastard! Just now we ran out of uh, memory on the SD card, and Rex had to run a oh, hundred yards, two hundred yards. <sighs> you know what I'm not excited about? Huh? So I had an embarrassing realization. Oh, what was that? My whole life, my whole life, I've been able to run like a young buck. All right? You got like the, got the stride, you got the good form. I'm halfway through this <laughs> jog. <laughs> and I realized, holy I got the old man high shoulders. Ah! <laughs> and my knees aren't bending that much. Ah! <laughs> and I'm starting to go limp in the wrist. <laughs> and I'm winded as <laughs> Oh, we're well, getting old, my friend. <laughs> a little bit. Breakfast whiskey will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Black Bottle originally was a blend of all, at the time, seven distilleries on Isla. Okay. Which sounds amazing, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, after they got repurchased, it became like a source from everywhere else with a little bit of Isla mixed into it, which is more like some of the Johnny Walker, this slight smoky, the double black. looks or different like that. than the standard. Well, this one black is bottle. the black bottle, 10 years old. Oh. And this is a no age statement? Yeah. Okay. So this is what I always consider to be my budget line. The no age statement Would you get, It's a good, also a good entry into uh, Petey's yeah, and the a, smoke. It's a great entry into it. Yeah. Now, what I don't know is, is this one of the variations where it was all Isla, or start, are we way too far along for that? start stripping here. Isn't it? Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, so what's the proof? I don't know, I'm trying to get some kind of information out of it. Uh, proof is 43. This, on the nose, is similar to something we just tried. Yeah, the Bamore. The Bamore. Yeah. All right, and they don't have that. It's sweeter than you would think. It's almost, yeah. uh, it's, it's almost like flavored caramel sweet. There's a peat in there. Yeah, I don't think this is the all seven Distillery black bottle. I think this is one of the later. Oh, hold on. We're we're all wrong. We're all wrong. This is the finest whiskey we've ever had. Oh, because it says finest, finest Scotch, Scotch whiskey, whiskey with a heart of Isla. <laughs> now the fact that they put a heart of Isla on there makes me think they just added some Isla into it. Yeah. Now it was a heart is just a piece. Yeah. Um. Man. Uh. So here, here's the thing. It's nice. I like it on the nose. I'm looking for. I think I go in. I went into this looking for more peat than uh, I was going to get out of it. It's definitely there, but it's heavy butterscotch. Yeah, butterscotch and a little bit of fruity, fruity sweetness. Oh, the taste is nice though. Mhm. Mm Got a little bit of a bite. Let's compare it to the original, uh, or the the no age statement. All right, all right. We're comparing. I can't I, believe we're comparing at the I end. Need, I need more my, more breakfast in my morning. <laughs> more whiskey in my breakfast. Yeah. Just very tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got a scooter. It's, it's hard to pour when you're laughing. <laughs> and sweating. Yeah. You know what's funny is my, my, my scooter. <laughs> Damn it. You know what's funny is my scooter. <laughs> That I bought. He bought a scooter. I know because this I, son of a bitch was so jealous. Because Rex's scooter was so much fun, <laughs> and so I bought my own. But my scooter today, I got shipping notification mm -hmm. from my. It's really hard to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came <laughs> with a complimentary. <laughs> oh, this can only be good. <laughs> Uh, apparatus for holding your oxygen tank. <laughs> if you're having trouble getting around, you need a hover around power chip. <laughs> oh my god! You got a personal mobility scooter! You're <laughs> set for the nursing home! Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're gonna be the coolest dude in the nursing home. <laughs> and it came with an orange flag for the back of the- Oh god, you're gonna pull so much tail <laughs> in the nursing home. <laughs> Complimentary holder for an umbrella. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> that is. See, I was going for a different kind of ridiculous with my scooter. <laughs> I think, uh, on the whole, uh, <laughs> yours will be more ridiculous. I think you're right. <laughs> you know, the uh, this version of the black model is a little spikier. These are so. They're really close. Honestly, what's the price difference in this? I have no idea. I think okay. this is just an earlier bottling. An earlier bottling? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I'm not seeing a wild... It, it, quality is very subjective, but for me, right. I could take either of these and I would be perfectly... Yeah. I, if you're going to have to pick between an earlier bottling and 10-year-old Mark and this one, mm -hmm. go with the standard because they're not different enough to justify any kind of price increase yeah. the 10-year-old age statement's going to have on it. You know what I mean? I think this is all mid to r high range notes, mid to high range notes, but yeah. usually what you get whenever you get peat is like a low, bassy, aggressive note. You're getting no. the little the little um, chips, the tips, the cutoff points of mid to high range peat, and then the low bassy. You know what it is? Think of it as a difference between, if you're into Texas barbecue, or I should say if you're into any kind of slow smoked barbecue, mm -hmm. you have the barbecue flavor when someone has actually done, used a smoker More. and burned an entire fire uh, right through yeah. the meat yeah and then you have like you used your little gas grill with some wood chips yeah, yeah. you know what i mean i'm getting and you put your little tray of wood chips in the bottom of the gas grill it's like that that's kind of the difference if this is smoky it's more like that. Here's your little tray of wood chips smoky i'm getting more peat out of the ten year. me too more caramel yeah, uh, butterscotch out of the black bottle. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right. Well, I think that calls it. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drink. If you fight, may I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.